Welcome back to The Breakfast. And uh, our next major conversation this morning is with regards 2023 general elections. Some people might argue that it's too early to have those conversations. But, you know, there's also, you know, um, situations where we've seen people already seeming to be campaigning. Uh, these persons have not officially stated that they will be running for office at, in 2023. But if you look across Abuja from news reports, you would see um, uh, campaign posters of certain persons. Uh, one of them, of course, the former Senate President Bukola Saraki. Um, well, it says youthful and competent leadership. We can also uh, remember that yesterday we spoke about <laughs> vote for change, and well, that I'll be is for <laughs> yeah, yeah, below <laughs> of Kogi State. We can also remember <laughs> yesterday we spoke about Jagaba and uh, five kg bags of rice that were shared in Kano State, um, and so these are examples of persons who you know either willingly or you know maybe you know you know they may not even be aware have uh, started putting out information and campaigning for 2023. This morning, we're speaking with Adeyemi Misaka, a, a public affairs analyst, and Mr. Alester Wilcox, who is joining us via phone. Good morning to you both. Good morning. It's nice to be here once again. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Wilcox, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Good morning. All right, good, good morning. morning. I'm going to start with our um, guests in the studio. Um, so it, it's not uh, it's not unusual to see these things happen, you know, you know, in the build up to Nigerian elections. But this is two years, you know, before you know we actually start, you know, getting into an electoral process before INEC even opens up the doors for campaigning. So what exactly would you say is going on? Well, for me, it's um, it's probably Nigerians um, having a peep into what to say in 2023 and probably maybe start you know work towards accepting making a choice or rejecting some people um some some candidacy or some ambitions is saying out there hilarious you know funny some which can it an insult to our collective intelligence some you it gets you thinking you look at it with a bit of seriousness will it happen but uh, it's never too early because um, if you look at what we've been coming, what we've been experiencing since 2015, I think it's early enough for us to start. It's not too early for us to start thinking and looking at the way out of this mess we found ourselves. Not too early? It's not, no, as Nigerians, it's not too early for us to start weighing our options. It's not too early. What we've been, you have to get out of this nightmare as soon as possible. Mm. And that's for me. You can't get well. <laughs> according to what the law says, you can't get out of it. No, I mean, I mean, it's not as if we're doing it officially. At least let's have a people. Let's start thinking individually as Nigerians. Well, let's have an idea of how do we get out of this nightmare. All right. Nightmare. Um, let, okay. Let's, uh, let's find out from <laughs> Lester. Yeah. So Adeyemi says it's not too early. And Lester, is it too early to start campaigning for 2023? Well, I want to greet Mr. Adeyemi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. That your award took me aback, nightmare. I wonder where, the, where, where, what our country, what nightmare our country is. But that is that uh, in, the, in the realm of everybody's opinion. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think that word is quite strong for a country like Nigeria, nightmare. I mean, we are not in a nightmare. We are a democratic country, and I think we are moving at the pace which we shouldn't move, but uh, it can be a pace that we should move better. Um, I agree with him. It's not too early uh, in every political system. Uh, there's always a time for, uh, ali for alignment and realignment going to happen. Um, like you mentioned, 2015, the alignment started 2012, I believe. Uh, 2012, when the uh, uh, alignment started, and that culminated in the, a new uh, political party that finally wrestled power from the dominance of the decadent uh, uh, system we were creating before then. So um, it's not too early. But again, in any system, there are pretenders and there are real actors. So most of the things you are seeing now, like the posters you are showing me, um, people are just are pretenders. And they always come up at every point in time. They always come up to try their, their, to flex their muscle. I, I remember um, sometime in 2016 or thereabout, or 17, uh, Fire Shake came up. In fact, launched a lot of buses, a lot of uh, a lot of programs for to, to contest the 2019 election as president. Then he was still governor. 
So, I mean, we, we can find things like that. They all happen in our system. That's part of the comedy of our political system and, uh, and jokes. So, there are the pretenders, and they will always come up at this point. But the real actors are also there. But I, like I said, it's not too early. If there's any alignment going to happen, realignment, and any serious plan, because Nigeria is a big country, any serious plan that's going to be, I think the time is now for such plans to, to, to kick start. But, but, but this, this uh, Mr. Wilcox, this isn't necessarily. There's governance. Uh, Mr. Wilcox, this isn't necessarily campaigning. This is really just posters appearing here and there. Um, the only one that might be more than just a poster would be the Jagaba um, bags of rice. Um, and these things don't necessarily, I mean, even for that, doesn't really you know, mean that he might be running for president. So um, is it possible that these things are done without their knowledge, without the knowledge of the persons in question here? Uh, not really. Uh, most of them are known. The, uh, the persons in question sometimes endorse these things. In terms of, like, for instance, now you see the Jagaban rice. I don't know, uh, it was shared in Kano. Yes. And don't forget that Jagaban has a very good friend in the, in the governor of uh, Kano State. So there may be some alignment between himself and the governor as to how he wants to feather his. Uh, I mean, it's an open secret that the Jagaban is part of one of those in the midst for the 2023 presidential election. So that may not be out of place. I'm also not, it can also be out of place to, to think that uh, the governor of uh, um, uh, Kogi State, talking of Yaya Bello, is also feathering some people. It's not, it will not also be out of his knowledge because he has, he has made, he has reached out to the financial leaders of this world. He has reached out to some people for, uh, in, in order to test the water. So he almost, but I'm not aware, I, I, I've not had much of Saraki, Bukola Saraki, um, if, uh, if, uh, he also does what people are doing with his poster. Uh, but being somebody who has gone to the level of a Senate president, I think the only best place for him to go, I'm, I don't see Saraki going back to contest as a senator. The only best place for him to go is uh, to put a shot at the president. But don't forget, he also put a shot at the presidency in 2019. So he also, he has not, uh, I'm sure he has not the biggest ambition to also put up a shot at the president. So in all this, they might be aware, the actors might be aware, not to also rule out the fact that sometimes people too will just carry out their, because this Nigeria, carry out certain mandates, which is not, um, we does not uh, I mean, have the, 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 the support of the principal. They just, some of them wake up and see it like that, and they just dance along and just keep quiet. So uh, I, think, I think that's my position on that. Let me come to Ademi, uh, Ademi here. You know, if you, if you take a look at um, Saraki, uh, before President Buhari came on board, you know, the first time around, he had to win his party's primary, right? One of the people he contested against was Saraki. Uh, so I I'm trying to see, uh, Alessa called some people pretenders and some people the real actors. So I want to pick your brains a bit to see who you would categorize as a pretender and an actor. And then you see Yaya Bello, the governor of, uh, incumbent governor of Kogi State. On one of the posters, I, I saw them call him the bridge, the, uh, what? The gap bridger. Yeah, some and president he, uh, material. Oh, okay, uh -huh, look at it, that's what yeah, I'm talking he's about. He's also mentioned, uh, just quickly add, in, <laughs> in recent interviews, he mentioned that the you know, Nigerian women and, and youths were crying and begging that he contests for. Oh, wow. Okay, so um, then we now have the Jagaba rise now. I don't know what, what I call it, Jagaban or Jagaba or something, because we see Jagaba, that's it, that's it, uh, in Kano. So I, I want to find out from you, do you see any of these people pretending? Oh, oh wow! The some uh, I think the only person that has been uh, frontal enough with his um, ambition, give it to him is Yayabelo. Not that I believe in him. Not that I believe he has what it takes to take Nigeria to promised land. And um, I we saw um, it's early to campaign, so I don't want to like either talk down a party or give somebody's um, or probably praise another party. Um, for Bukola Saaki, I think uh, one should look at it. It's true is that um, in the ring, I think after his second time in office as governor of Kwara State to contest the PDP ticket, I think um, that I gave it to, was it Jonathan? I think it was in 22, it was to governor to 2011. And it, that was when it went to the Senate. And for, for anybody that, that knows politics, for anybody that understands political timing and politicking, will tell you that you cannot, you cannot, um, 
push aside or probably ignore Bukola Saaki. I finally call him Bookie Boy. Okay. <laughs> and um, um, for Bola Metinumbu, yeah, for in the APC is is like a god. You can take that away from him. And you know, and my question is, um, what's what is he gonna tell us in train train three that we've not heard? Is he gonna tell us that he wants to continue the good work and build on the legacies of Buhari or Buhari failed us and wants to do the right thing? So that's the for me, personal opinion, that's the dilemma um Tinumbu will probably go through or probably will have trying to convince Nigerians. Not somebody like me, not all Nigerians then. But uh, if if Muhammadu Bari can become the president, yeah, well, 2015, let's say like the, um, the goodwill of Nigerians. But if Muhammadu Bari, in, in the face of um, gross incompetence and Nigerians could reinforce failure in 2019, I would not say Yabilu cannot be the president of Nigeria. I'm scared of my country. I'm scared for my country. I'm scared of my compatriots. All right. I, I want to, um, you know, now that we're talking, I, just to quickly also uh, mention that these persons haven't necessarily started campaigning. No, Yabilu has been you know, frontal with his own. Yabilu even said his party will yeah, give well, him Well, he's, he's mentioned it, you know, but yeah. he, this is not a campaign for president. He hasn't, you know, done what we actually call campaigning. And that's what I want to go into now. And I, I would like both, you know, of you to answer this. Mr. Wilcox, um, before we get to the point where INEC then declares open, you know, campaign period, and, you know, any person who decides to run, you know, then, you know, steps forward, um, is it interesting or is it important that we start to educate or Nigerians start to get better education on what to look out for in presidential campaigns? The rice may not be enough. <laughs> oh, well, I probably start with Dame Sakada and I think we may have lost um, uh, Alessa Wilcox. So rice may not be enough. Onions may not be enough either. Um, neither would vegetable oil. Um, do you think that we will get to that point where Nigerians will be able to look deeper than some of all these things and see beyond, I mean, see through the lies, you know, when it's time to campaign? Uh, yeah, I think we can. And I think the, the only way to, to get about it and to get to that um, promised land, if I can use that word, is if we have our, um, the electoral hearts revised, you know, um, reviewed and a new one passed into law, and if Muhammadu Buhari will be gracious enough now to ascend to the to such bill, that will that will be fantastic. E voting is important. Electronic voting is important. Um, they have to find a way. It was a time I was on, on this platform. The, um, the I think the head of voters education INX says they they probably pleading and they want the National Assembly to make sure that. Um, the card reader is captured in our laws and things like that. And I, I, I'm praying as well. I'm, think, I'm hoping that this, this set of, um, it's obvious, the rubber stamp National Assembly, for once to tell, prove to Nigerians that there, there's a usefulness in them to come up with their electoral hats and the president signs it. With that, if we can have credible elections, we, you know, people will believe in the system. If there's room for independent candidacy, there's no need for you to to kill yourself to get a party's ticket, if you know, if you're sure. Because the election is about, is a popularity contest. So if, you, if you're so sure you're popular and it reduces um, the financial burden and the amount um, expended in politics, then the electoral process becomes more transparent, becomes more reliable. Um, it, Nigerians get more confidence in, in, in the system. But, but what I'm trying to get is, do you think Nigerians will get to a place where Nigerians, you know, and the whole voting uh, population will be able to see no, but because by the time see beyond fake I'm promises? Coming. So by the time the electoral system is, um, is, is plain, simple, and straightforward, then if you, you could be so sure you see through this thing and you know you are rejecting them at the polls and the stands, and that is it. If you don't get, if it, with the enabling laws that guarantees you free, fair elections, you probably, some people, I understand this thing, some people even didn't vote for this bad, I'm not saying this government generally is bad, but they didn't vote for bad governance. But the, the system threw up these bad people. So they just said, why do I want to lose both ways? I probably will vote, my vote will, will not count. At the same time, I'm stuck with these people, so let me get what I can get from them. But if you're so sure the system guarantees that your vote counts, the system guarantees that the, the, the process is, uh, is watertight, 
fatherland free and the, the, the right people get there, the people's choice and mandates is uh, protected and validated. You, you, you tell anybody giving you rice, spaghetti, onions, and uh, whatever that man, well, thank you for the bazaar. But without that, I don't, I don't, this, this is going to be a cycle that will continue for to that kingdom come. But if they give us laws that we can take good elections, that, in, that we know that, yes, this is what we get for at every dispensation. This is, we, we, the output is, is, a, is equal to the inputs, you know. The Nigerians, I guess we get, we get, we start having issue-based campaign. Mm -hmm. no, we won't care if it's um, our turn, your turn, or something. We're probably looking at GDP. We're probably looking at issues of national security, issues of defense, um, budget spending will come into play, um, laws and you know constitutionality, and how you respect the various institution of separation of powers yes. will come into play. But without that, without the electoral hacks of laws that will guarantee us good elections, we're stuck with these um, masquerades dancing in the market square. Well, I, I know if, if those are the grassroots who do the, the majority of the voting would care about issue-based campaign and all of that. They will. They will? Yeah, they will. When, because they're, when they're poor and they need food okay, and they uh, seem rice, I, I know if they're going <laughs> to... I know, because, uh, so, okay, I, because if governance is close to the people and you... Even if there are a lot of things, when we talk about electoral constitution, the recall process is there, the accountability process is there, where you can question them and you can either... Institutes of, okay, as an individual, I don't think it. I don't think there's anywhere in your constitution that you could write or a lawyer could petition a public office order at the state of the assembly, and you know that becomes a ground for impeachment proceedings or something. Yes, you could write, they will tell you to go to court. So, when we have such a robust system in place, I think people will sit tight and, and they will want to market themselves, and you want to market yourself intelligently to people, not. Mm. Not in the way things were done in 1864 with Rice, Gary, and um, Agbadu, like you said, in Kano. <laughs> oh, so, okay, I would, I would have, oh, okay. Uh, I was just going to say I would have loved Alesta to react to your mm. question about the electoral system, but it looks like we are stuck with that DM, yeah? So I don't know if you want to push him further. Yeah, but, um, I mean, still, you know, on the same thing, you know, because I, I believe that, uh, you know, there's a lot of Nigerians, you know, who, you know, even on social media, who would say that um, we need to get to a place where, issue-based campaigns are, you know, um, are needed. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot of other factors that come to play. Like she also mentioned, you know, poverty, um, hunger, unemployment, some of all these, you know, things are factors that come to play and, you know, make it less necessary for issue-based campaigns. Um, if voter inducement can, you know, be so uh, far spread across the country. Um, but I, I want to, you know, look closer at um, uh, Bolame Tinubu um, and, the speculations, the rumors that you know he might be running in 2023. Um, we've also seen a lot going on in Kano State. Um, why do you think that is happening? Well, um, the excuse is Ramadan is, is around the corner. He's, he's in, he said, um, Fulani and Yorubas are one. Uh, my history tells me differently. I don't know where he got that from. So it's all pure politics. Uh, Jacob Han is a Nigerian. He's been a governor for eight years. He was a senator uh, at the Apartheid Republic. Uh, is his right? He could exercise it, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe until you see, for us to get out of here, I probably want to get controversial. Here. For us to have good elections, credible elections, and you don't believe, we have to stop believing. It has to be. So we just have to wait for that massive vote from Kano or something. I think. We need to have a, 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 a census in this country. Is that, is that about time? Because if you look at the last 2019 election, there was a bomb blast that the day of the election in, in, in Damatu in Yobe. It had over 800,000 votes coming out of Yobe, Damatu that same day. There are some things that doesn't add up. So we need to uh, we need to really have the sensors. The sensors give you the demography of you know you with that you could project at this point in time this is the average voting population from this place from this place from this place and and I think any any and without budget without without a sensor we 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 can't really plan. It's not just about we shouldn't look at it just because of elections. Let's just allocate or let's we have to show them that we have the numbers. Mm -hmm. We need to even plan. We need to know how to get out of this. Poverty um, cycle. We need to. We need to 
plan how to develop. We need to know the infrastructure chasm we're facing. We need to know where we need if how to plan for our health, healthcare and things like even education. So we need we need yeah. and with the right sensors results and appropriate one, a truth a truthful one, it could make even our electionary process smoother and more transparent. All right. Well, welcome back um Alessa Wilcox. Thank you. I've been, I've been, I've, I've been in the waiting room ever since. Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you back. I, I, I want you know you to address this. Um, I think this was posted by Deja Deonju uh, a couple of days ago, and he was referring to those young um, political and presidential hopefuls, the third force, the not too young to run, the you know the likes. You know, there's a particular group that always shows up just before the elections. He was, of course, seemingly mocking them, saying they that they, they will, yeah, exactly, they aspire <laughs> to aspire to retire. Uh, he was seemingly saying that they will show up, you know, in six months to the election and expect that, you know, they have enough popularity across the country to win anything, you know, in any you know seats across Nigeria, which doesn't work because of the peculiarities of Nigeria's political and election, you know, um, um, process. Um, so, do you, you know, would you say that, you know, for you, because of the peculiarities of our situation, for you to be able to be relevant in 2023, it's best that you start to put your face out there in 2021? If you, if you are not yet in limelight politics, like the Jagabans, like, like the Brokola Saraki, uh, and then you want to uh, be anything... Uh, national in 2023, then you should have started 2015. See, look, we, we, we joke a lot in this country, and unfortunately, most of us public analysts, we come on TV, we come on TV and radio, and we incite the people, we make them happy, they can do it, forgetting, like you said, the peculiarities. Somebody who has not been a counselor, you've not won a counselor seat before, you, you are not even popular, you don't even know the political terrain of your local government, of your ward. The next thing, election comes, boom, you want to become president of Nigeria? What a joke. Are we Togo? Are we, ben are we Syria alone? Even Syria alone, you can't, you can't even do that. I, uh, you can't do that in the Republic. You've not, you don't, you've not, you, you, you are nowhere because you make noise on social media, you have Twitter, that you have uh, 200, uh, 200 million followers. You think that is what gives you election? Of course, you are a joker. And that's why I see there are so many pretenders. So for you to walk up in 2023, so we're talking about, and you see, uh, my, brother, uh, uh, my brother in the studio, I think let us also try and uh, advise our people. There are levels of governance that you can make impact, not just the president. Everybody looks at the presidency, and that is why we in the, in the media has diverted everybody's attention to the presidency. Nobody talks about how well the governors are running with their resources and local government administrations. We're all looking to the president. We, we want Gary, we are looking to the president. We want soup in our quads, in our we're looking to the president. We want onions, we're looking to the president. And we have, and part of, and part of the problem was caused by us public analysts. So, what about to become president in order to solve Nigerians' problem? You can solve Nigerians' problem from being a counselor in the world. Start there, and grow it up. So, for me, anybody who wants to be anything in 2023 that has not started in 2015, to have walked up the ladder, to have done alignment, is not a Twitter thing. After all, some people, I mean, this man that had over, over, over. Over 200, 000, over 2 million people in his Twitter in Anambra election, 20, uh, the last election, couldn't score more than 7,000 votes. These are the peculiarities. You need to be a the grassroots. The, 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 the people that vote, the, the, the people that vote in the village, they don't have Twitter, they're not on Twitter, they're not, they're not Sorosoke generation. The Sorosoke generation, they are only interested in their music and in uh, video and uh, watching status on uh, so on social media, that's what I'm interested in. They are the social uh, 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 generation. So all the noise that is being made, it is noise. At the end of the day, the politicians will still know how to get the, the votes, and then they will still win the election, and you keep making the noise. The okay. noise does not help. So let me if you want in. to have plans, I, I think that uh, those talk, talking about thought force today, um, let me just tie this in, those talking about thought force today, look, for us to have APC, we've had CPC since 2003. We've had AMPP since, 2000, since 1998. We've had ACN since 1998. That is the metamorphosis from AD to it. Now, this force came together in 2012 to fight 2015 election. You, you are nowhere. Nowhere. Only Twitter and making noise and abusing government and abusing Buhari and abusing people. That's all, that's, that is all you are doing. And you think that we win the election? 
That is a joke. Pure joke. And, you, and it doesn't take you anywhere. It doesn't take Nigeria anywhere. You need to walk through the political system for you to get to anywhere you want to go to. Biden did not become president of America just by, the, just by tweeting and making noise. He has been there. Obama did not become president of America just by, 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 by his rabble wrestling. He started somewhere. Bill Clinton started at uh, Bill Clinton started at uh, Attorney General of Arkansas years back before he was able to climb to the ladder. So you must start from somewhere. You don't just wake up and you want to become a Nigerian president. It doesn't work that way. Okay. This is not a military government. This is not a military coup. Yeah. It's democracy. We get the message, right? So let me jump in here. Uh, just to react to what you said earlier on about always focusing on, uh, you know, the seat of the president. Osaogi and I yesterday talked about local government autonomy, right? Mm -hmm. Because it came up. So as these things come up, we tackle them one after the other. But I would like for us to circle back to one of the things we talked about while you were in the waiting room. We talked about the electoral system. And Osagi talked about Rice and uh, Gary and not, being in, <laughs> <laughs> not being enough anymore for Nigerians. I just want to have your take on that as we wrap this segment up. Well, <laughs> well, uh, if Trump will start sharing food in America, <laughs> then uh, I think uh, <laughs> we're not doing bad as Nigerians. But that's a joke. Um, sincerely speaking, uh, if rice and agbar is not enough in Nigeria again, it's because we are no longer the population is increasing and the farming, uh, the farming, the, the land is is decreasing. Uh, people are no longer, and I've been saying this thing: hunger is staring us at the face. Today, every land everybody is doing land speculation and taking away all the uh, arable agricultural land that small farmer, smallholder farmers are using to, uh, to to grow corn, to grow cassava, to grow. The, everybody is not looking for land speculation and they are not looking for estates, the building of estates that nobody is inhabiting. That's the problem we are we are, we, we are confronting. We are not addressing it. So uh, it's not that the election comes and take up all the land, all the gary and everything. It is because the land is getting smaller. The population is increasing. The land is getting smaller. And except something is done, look at, okay, look, take, take, take a look at all the areas from Aja up to Ekpe. All the small farm holders, they are no longer there. They are, they, 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 their lands have been bought over by land speculators. So all those who, have been growing, who should be growing those little, little food that will supplement the bigger ones, the bigger farmers, they are no longer there. They, they've been paid some... Some, some, some small money, right. Ms. they Ms. think Mr. it's Mr. big, Walcott. and they've given up their land to land speculators. And things are, 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 things are going from bad to worse. Ogun State, that has all the land that, that can feed the Southwest, what are they doing with their land? Alistair they Walcott, um, we're, we're going to have to wrap up churches, here. Churches, mosques, camps, and yeah. uh, nobody is growing food. Everybody is looking for estates, looking for... Mr. Walcott, estate, we, need, we need to wrap up here. That, um, that, 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 and I'm, I'm sure... Need, can you that, hold on? That's... Hmm. I'm sure, you know, the conversation on foodstuff, you know, is coming because of one thing that you mentioned and you agree to, and that is the peculiarity of our political situation and political um, um, space here in Nigeria. These things will always come up because, you know, um, of where we are. But we'll say a big thank you to you. Thank you for speaking with us and for your time this morning. Uh, it's been a very interesting conversation. Always uh, uh, fun speaking with you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Wilcox. Thank you very much for having me. It's my, it's my pleasure. Thank you. David Saka. Yeah, always uh, very interesting. A, a quick one I'll make it very brief. I think we, should, we always look at the president because we the kind of system and government we're running, we've not had, um, we've not restructured. And secondly, I will speak for my generation. The Soseki generation, like he said, we're not only interested in watching, looking at status and everything. The the evolution and the the what the discovery of what we've had in, in the tech is from our generation, not the generation of um, Operation Wete. So it's, it's, it's an insult to our generation to say we are just bothered about making noise on Twitter and everything. We're doing well. We are the ones saving this country. As we are even the ones running this country by the backbone of this country as we are at the moment. Good to hear that. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Misaka, for speaking with us. You're welcome. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again. Yeah, you know, just a call away. <laughs> All right. Stay with us. So we're talking Ramadan next. Uh, Muslims, of course, have begun the holy month of piety. And uh, we'll be talking about that uh, right after the short break. Stay with us. <laughs>